Each Chinese car maker has their own way of battling the China-made stigma. One car maker makes use of tech and their association with a certain Swedish brand that they own. Another car maker makes use of the longest warranty you can find in any car. For GAC, their approach is quite different. Build the most durable car using top quality parts sourced from established parts manufacturers. They employed this technique in their latest subcompact crossover offering, the GS3 200T. And today, we get to drive it. Let's do this! GAC has been building Japanese brand cars in the Chinese market for nearly two decades now. These are Honda, Isuzu, Mitsubishi, and everybody's favorite Japanese brand, Toyota. Their vast experience building these Japanese brand cars in the Chinese market means that they have access to global parts suppliers such as Isin for their transmission and Bosch for their electronic stability control. This vast experience and expertise can be seen in their latest offering, the GS3. When you look at the GS3's front clip, you could immediately tell that GAC manufactures Honda vehicles for the Chinese market. The front grille has a lot of chrome on it, similar to what you can find in a Honda CR-V. In fact, they kind of look alike. The headlights here are called Eagle Eye headlights, maybe because the turn signals here look like eagle wings. These are halogen units though, but at least they still get projector type housing. Now when you move over to your fog lights, you get halogen fog lights here, but the execution of the fog lights housing could have been done better. It protrudes a little bit, which I kind of find a little bit off-putting. It's an attempt by GAC to look original, but unfortunately it failed miserably. Now, when you look at the entire front fascia of the GS3, it has that uh, chunky look to it. The hood line is as tall as some of the compact crossover offerings in the local market. It strikes an imposing presence, which makes it look larger than it actually is. So, it actually gets a few brownie points for this added road presence. The chunky design of the GS3 continues onto the side profile. It's got the largest windows in the subcompact crossover category, which translates to better interior visibility, which I will get to later. This top spec variant gets power folding side mirrors with uh, LED side repeaters, but you also get a design cue on the front fender that looks like turn signals. I find it a little bit weird. I mean, they should have just omitted this. Now, another design cue that they should have omitted is the word Trump Chi found on the plastic cladding. The GS3 is marketed as a Trump Chi in the Chinese market, hence the name. Uh, luckily, it's embossed, so it doesn't really call too much attention to itself. However, since I've already shown it to you, you can no longer unsee it. Now, this top spec variant gets 18 inch alloys that's wrapped in 22555R18 Michelin tires. Now, another notable characteristic of the GS3 is just how hefty the doors feel. Check this out. The doors are heavy, they feel substantial, and they close like a European car. Now, when you get over to the rear part of the side of the GS3, that's where the design gets a little bit confused. You see the GS3 sports this floating roof design in the D-pillar, but the way they executed it, it's um, unique to be perfectly honest. The lower part of the D-pillar looks like a shark's fin that's outside of the water. I mean, some people would like it, but personally, it doesn't really float my boat. GAC should have just com completed this whole thing all the way to the side to give it a sleeker look. Now, I like the design of the rear end of the GS3 except for one major design fail that I'll point out later. This GS3 unit gets uh, LED taillights and I love how it's shaped like the infinity symbol because it looks really unique and original only to the GS3. Now, the design fail that I mentioned are these dual exhaust tailpipe treatments that can be found on the rear bumper. No, these are not exhaust pipes. These are not even lights. These don't really serve any function at all. I mean, it's an attempt to look sporty, but it really failed miserably. GAC should have just omitted these two babies here and just given it a really sleek, smooth bumper. I mean, that would have looked better. Now, when you pop open the trunk, you get 370 liters of trunk space, which is decent for a subcompact crossover. I like the fact that the opening is wide and it's also low. So lifting heavy stuff into your trunk, well, it will be easier on your back. Now, if 370 liters is not enough for you, you could tumble down the seat backs of the second row and that would give you around 780 liters of trunk space. That's uh, pretty decent, but not really class leading in the subcompact crossover category. Now let's head over to the front just to see what kind of motor powers this GS3. Now this top spec GS3 variant, it's a 1.3-liter turbocharged four-cylinder petrol engine 
that's good for 136 horses and 202 newton meters of torque. Now, this um, engine power figures might seem a little bit on the modest side, but at least it's put to good use by a six-speed automatic transmission and not a CVT. This uh, six-speed auto is sourced from ISIN, one of the world's uh, major transmission manufacturers that also supplies uh, other major brands like Toyota, amongst others. This uh, six-speed auto may not be as uh, fancy or as quick-shifting as, let's say, a dual-clutch transmission, but at least in the long run, it's going to be cheaper and easier to maintain. Now, in terms of uh, fuel economy figures, this um, GST 200T can also return decent fuel economy because in city driving, you could do around 10 kilometers per liter, and when it comes to highway driving, you could reach as much as 15 kilometers per liter. Now, let's head inside the GS3 just to see what kind of uh, goodies we can find there. Now, when I first sat inside the driver's seat of the GS3, my first impression was like, wow, these seats are so soft. The padding material used is quite plush, and the leather materials themselves, well, they're quite soft and supple. I like the fact that it's uh, black leather seats with brown inserts. It gives it a little bit more of an upscale and sophisticated touch. It also has these uh, copper colored stitching here that adds to that upscale feel. Now the seats may be soft but they don't lack support. It's got a good amount of lumbar support. You've got uh, some good bolstering here, not really that aggressive. So that should make a lot of uh, larger people than me quite happy. Now the seats are not power adjustable so you'll have to make do with manual adjustments. While they uh, gave you really great seats, they kind of cheaped out on the steering wheel material. The steering wheel of the top spec GS3 still is, comes in urethane. It's not a leather material, so it's pretty sad that they did that. I mean, it's a quick $50 aftermarket fix, but it should have come in leather straight from the factory. Now, the urethane use, however, is quite soft, so it could almost pass for real leather. Well, almost. Moving from your steering wheel, you get a more traditional instrument gauge setup here. You got a tachometer and a speedometer that's uh, ringed in a nice blue ring there. And you've got a multi-information display in the middle showing your vital stats. From your instrument gauges, you have an 8-inch infotainment system screen here that's a touch screen. But it doesn't have Apple CarPlay, it doesn't have Android Auto as well. It only comes with Bluetooth connectivity. You do get a rear view camera though, so there's that. And uh, at least... In my driving experience with this GS3, the sound stage is quite good. The audio quality is quite good. It's much better than a lot of the other subcompact offerings out in the market. You also get this uh, physical buttons here and control knobs to help you navigate your infotainment system much better. Moving from there, you got your automatic climate control system here down at the bottom. And you also have a USB charging port and a 1990s throwback. You see, the GS3 is probably the only car that I've reviewed that came with an actual cigarette lighter here in the 12 volt charging port. This should make a lot of people uh, who love to smoke inside their cars quite happy. Now from this 1990s throwback, you get a shifter here that's connected to your six speed automatic transmission. And this shifter has a plus and minus button here at the side, similar to what you can find in Ford's uh, select shift system. Now the, the shape of the shifter and the placement of this plus and minus manual buttons is counterintuitive. You see, I've made a mistake several times during my drives wherein I reach for the shifter and I want to get out of park and go into drive and I press on these manual buttons. Now the retaining button to get out of park and into drive can be found in the front. So I really don't like how they put this here. They could have just given this baby some paddle shifters or the usual gated plus and minus system on the shifter. Now moving from there, you got a button here at the side of the shifter that gives you your drive modes. You got your normal mode, you got your manual mode, and you got your eco mode. Now if you want to go into sport mode, you get out of drive and slot it into S, which stands for sport. So that's also another system that I, I kind of find, found in some of the Ford uh, models as well. Now the shifter area is surrounded by this piano black finish, which looks good while it's new, but should get a lot of scratches and fingerprints in no time. You also get an electronic uh, parking brake here with an auto hold feature and a nice leather wrap armrest here in the middle with a center cubby. Now, the GS3 also gets a sunroof, which is pretty common and normal when it comes to these Chinese-made cars, even at this price point. Now, from your sunroof, you also look at your cabin materials, and the materials used are quite good. You get a two-tone black and brown finish here. The center dashboard is finished in brown leather with this nice copper stitching as well. 
the plastics that's been used in the door panels and in the top dashboards are quite soft, at least softer than some of the other subcompact uh, crossover offerings that I've reviewed as well. You also get this nice copper trimming surrounding your AC vents and your infotainment system. Now another unique uh, feature that can be found in the GS3 is their love for rounded squares. If Mini has a lot of circles inside their cabin, the GS3 has a lot of rounded squares. Your infotainment system is surrounded by a rounded square. Your AC vents are rounded squares. Even your door handle spaces are rounded squares. And when you look at your climate control system, it's a set of three rounded squares. That reminds me of Tim Hoan's pork buns. Ooh, wow, pork buns. Now, those are yummy. Anyway guys, so now that we've discussed the front side of the cabin, let's head over to the rear end of the GS3 and see what kind of uh, backseat space and goodies that your family and your passengers can enjoy at the backseat. Now the people here in the backseat would appreciate the fact that the GS3 is the largest subcompact crossover in its class. That translates to a good amount of interior space here at the back seat. I'm 5 foot 6 and as you can see, I got a good amount of knee room and a decent amount of leg room as well. In terms of headroom, I still got around 6-7 inches away from the headliner, so that's a great thing. You don't really need also a panoramic sunroof here because the large windows would already give you that nice spacious and airy feeling here at the back. For toys, you get a couple of cup holders here in the center armrest. You also get a rear AC vent and a sole USB port charger at the bottom of the AC vent. Now, another thoughtful touch that I've seen in the GS3 is the fact that it's got a good amount of seat back pockets. While other car manufacturers would throw in a couple of seat back pockets and Mazda only gives you one, the GS3 comes with six seat back pockets. You've got a couple of uh, smaller pockets here up top of the seat so that you could park there your smartphone or some other smaller stuff. And you've got a larger seat back pocket for some of your regular stuff as well. So that's a nice tiny detail that the GS3 has that makes you think that, well, uh, GAC didn't really forget about the people that would be sitting at the back seat. Now, for, for those of you who have small kids or babies, you'd be happy to know also that the GS3 also comes with Isofix tethers right here at the back. Now, let's hop back into the driver's seat and I'll give you a driving impression of the GS3 200T. Let's go. Alright, so we're now behind the wheel of the GS3 and right off the bat, I could tell you that visibility is superb. The windshield is so large, it feels like I'm driving an MPV. I mean, the windows are also huge, so it gives me a really good amount of visibility all around. The A-pillars are also quite uh, thin, so that also helps as well. And uh, you don't really get any of that uh, sporty raked back windshield design here that can be found in other sporty crossovers. This is pure practical and it makes driving so much easier. Now in terms of actual engine performance, well, it's, uh, there's a little bit of a delay when you start from standstill and going into motion. It's like the car would take a deep breath first before it actually gets a move on. It's kind of weird, but it's one of those characteristics that it has when it's in uh, normal mode. If you put it on uh, sport mode though, the delay when downshifting is also quite pronounced. It's like it would take a deeper breath when it's about to downshift and then it will give you a downshift. Then it will start moving forward. There's also some turbo lag that could be felt in the lower part of the rev range below 3000 RPM. But once you get it up to 3500, 4000 RPM, that's when you could feel the turbo kick in. And yes, the GS3 would be properly motivated by then. Now when you're accelerating in this car, it doesn't really feel too rushed. It doesn't feel too hurried. Uh, this baby feels like it's moving with a lot of heft and yeah, it's probably has something to do with the NVH levels of the car. You see, the cabin is so insulated from the outside that even while you're going at triple digit speeds, it feels like you're still going around at let's say 60 kilometers per hour. Like for example, right now on this drive, we're now close to 100 kilometers per hour, but the car feels like it's driving so slow. It feels like we're only going at 60, believe it or not. So I have a feeling it has something to do with that fantastic NVH levels of this car. You don't really feel much of that acceleration happening. You don't feel much of the speed. 
And honestly, if you're somebody who's looking for comfort in their crossover, that is a fantastic thing. Now, I'm not saying that this car is, well, it's slow. It's not. You see, the six-speed automatic transmission, it's doing a good job putting the power down. It really just won't win any uh, stoplight drag races with other sportier crossovers. But that's the thing. This is not really a sporty crossover. The GS3, although it has a turbo, is still more marketed as a comfortable plush subcompact crossover than a sporty one. Now the air conditioning is cold and the seats are truly soft and comfortable. I must say this once again, these are really great seats. GAC knows that if you're after cabin comfort, you gotta throw in some great seats. And these are some of the best seats in the subcompact crossover category that I've sat in. Now another factor that contributes to the overall plushness of the cabin is the NVH levels. I mean, the GS3 has some really fantastic NVH levels inside. You don't really hear anything outside except for the occasional whine of your engine when you're going at speed. I would even dare say that GS3 has the best NVH levels in the subcompact crossover category, even besting the one that's found in the Mazda CX-30. Now that is saying a lot already. The suspension absorbs all the bumps with confidence. It's really quite soft and pliant. You don't really get uh, disturbed inside your cabin. It almost feels like you're driving a car. Now, the overall feel of this NVH, the quietness of the cabin, the quietness of the tires, there's really not much road noise that you could hear. It all contributes to make it feel as if you're driving a European subcompact crossover rather than one that's coming from China. Overall, if there's one word to describe the driving experience of this GS3, that would be plush. The cabin is plush, the suspension is plush, even the drive itself is plush. It doesn't really hurry, but in case you need to put down the power, it's fully capable to do so. Now, this won't win any stoplight drag races against sportier subcompact crossovers in the market, but then who needs to hurry up anyway if you're so comfortable in your plush cabin? The GS3 feels like a crossover that's been overbuilt and over-engineered. It's built like a tank and drives with a lot of heft and road presence that makes it feel like it's boss baby going down the office halls. It's got a lot of good quality cabin materials inside that surprised even me because this GS3 comes in at only 1,058,000 Philippine pesos. Now to further sweeten the deal, GAC even offers its GS3 owners a 5-year hassle-free ownership package where they throw in a 5-year bumper-to-bumper warranty and also a 5-year free preventive maintenance service package. Now that would make the GS3 a highly compelling choice for people who want a subcompact crossover with the plushest cabin for only 1 million pesos and change. Once again, thank you for watching one of my car reviews, guys. If you like this review, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button as well. I promise you guys I'll make it worth your while if you subscribe to Reagan's Rides. I'm Reagan, and I'll see you again in another video. Bye-bye.